Party Flex could go mid, but it's not going to have a lot of wave pressure in the mid lane. So also could just be a support answer into the Yumi. Loads of time we've seen coaches come out. I mean, Hedon specifically, we talk about him quite a lot here. <laughs> Since both of us know him, that when you see Yumi, just slap Sona and, and match that Enchanter energy. Soraka yeah. is kind of the same idea as well. And the thing is, if you catch Yumi off guard, she doesn't buy movement speed. If you catch her with the silence, not only can't she dismount, or remount rather, she'll also be For trapped me in it. So. For me here, it's pick AD here. Preserve flex in mid lane for Soraka and then just counter pick support on five or, or, or mid, depending on whether you want to preserve the flex or not. So I questions. really feel like Oplon have, I feel like Oplon have maneuvered themselves well here if they just pick AD carry. So what are we looking for here? Like, do you just want more healing as well? Are you looking for a Senna together or a Soraka and you let the Soraka farm or something? I think like that Senna's a bit overkill bottom? because I feel like, uh, yeah, for me, Aphelios is quite nice here in terms of just a, you play a bit more... You can be a bit more aggressive. I think it's a stable pick for z -Core. I don't think you need that overkill and healing. I think you've got enough if you're running the double enchantment setup, which we'll see, depending on what they pick. For me, Aphelia or Soraka are not really the lane you're going to look for, so I think it's maybe a little bit more telegraph that they're going to be kind of picking support here. But I think, to be fair, you probably can handshake it if you if they pick the Yumi, obviously. So, okay, well, the, we, we both, you and I, Jake, are not biggest fans of, uh, of Lee Sin. I think he did get some love going into 12.12, .12, so there is more uh, reason to go for it here but into the olaf you're not going to match him in the early game you're not going to match him when you both hit level six and i think actually into uh, soraka can be a little tricky if they you know you are very yeah. telegraphed and come back towards you you will yes, get silent yes yeah, okay. yes yes so yes, yes coming through this is this is interesting jake all right herald of oplon explain to me what you have conquered well, I like this in the sense of you, you've got Schoenfire on this Olaf. Olaf, he had a very impressive performance in the game they took against Carmine Corp. This guy knows his stuff on the champion. I feel like with the double enchanter setup, you're allowing Peng to facilitate that similar role that we've seen in so many of their victories, all two of the, all two out of three of them. But with that added Sona as well, you've hand shooken the lane with the Sona, and I feel like you're giving the you're giving the ability to not fall too far behind. They just have to be very wary of Skeens. Skeens is now forced into a position whereby he has to have a lot of impact in this bot lane or potentially in the top side as well. Dalek has a relatively stable matchup as well obviously he loses it but i feel like he can stay relevant in the side lane up until a certain point unless he falls too far behind i feel like oplon have got a draft here where as long as it stays stabilized and it doesn't fall apart of the seams in the early game they're very well tasked to kind of answer a lot of the questions that vitality B will be posing i think the but main you issue, can tell me if i'm completely wrong i think the main issue i have with having a soraka in the mid lane is that into the swain you are a really easy setup to just get killed into two yeah. versus two no right? i would agree Never with that i would agree with that in the mid lane it's very easy to punish a champion like Soraka too. I think it's, for me, my biggest word for Oplan is this specific early game, which is, you know, usually you'd love to skirmish around the Olaf. Problem is, I think that Soraka is going to be under a lot of pressure in the beginning, and because of that, not going to be able to have that amount of skirmish that you probably would like. But one thing Schoenfire is really good at doing in some of the other games they had was that they got the Drake stacking going in the early game. And we want to see that as well from Oplan. We want to see them be on top of their game when it comes to the neutral objective. Because if you start falling behind on the neutral objective side and specifically Herald and Vitality, Vitality B gets that tempo, that's going to be difficult. But we'll get all the answers very soon as we'll be throwing it to a quick bomb and then we'll be in game. Right? Right. My producer has just told me that he'd lied to me. He's legit made a fool on me live on broadcast. What do we think about well, that? I I think that's despicable, to be honest. I'm not talking about the new movie starring Gru and the Minions. Um, but... <laughs> Sorry, he, he he might be producing in a suit as well, but you, you never he might know. Be producing in a suit. You never know. You never know. All right, chat. I can start the game in about ten seconds or something like that. I'll, I'll press a button. Do you have? Do you, you got the button? Obviously, the caster's got the button to start the game, right? That's the caster's. Yeah, no, we got the button to start the game. I right, press the button. Be you very start shortly. Uh, well. And welcome onto the rift now for our game one of the day, Oplon, faced with a rather Herculean task of taking a game against Vitality B. If we're to continue the the rising vestiges of the Church of Oplon, they must conquer and vanquish the evil overlords, Vitality B here. But Gulborg, the non-believer, does not necessarily believe they're up to the task. I think, once again, we've seen them have very successful... Um 
game plans in terms of specific play style where they have that karma in the mid lane. And now we don't see the karma any longer. We see a Sona and then Soraka instead. So obviously Oplone has found their niche, which is these enchanters. But we haven't seen an official game from them yet without the karma. And this is where they're going to be properly tested. Beforehand, no team really had a read on them, so they could just pick whatever. Now they started picking up wins. People have figured out how they got those wins. Now they need to come up with something new, something different. Something that lets, you know, the fans buy into the hype that is Oplon. And if they take this against Vitality, you know, maybe I'll enlist into your religion. Well, you know, you don't even need to... Well, much like some other religions, uh, uh, you know, that... Oplon, <laughs> the stocks are rising at the moment, you know? You might want to buy in now, because uh -huh. otherwise... See the you, you've got to buy the dip. You've got to buy the dip sometimes, Gulborg. And, you know... They're not they're on a dip right now, but it's an exponential curve that's gonna be going on upwards. I'm not sure if I take your word for it. And, and uh, definitely not uh, an investment. Is it about me or is it trust. about me or is it about you, Google? I think it is about me more than you. Uh, I think it's yeah, me that needs convincing. That. And I'm one of those people who need to see it before I believe it. And uh yeah. I get that. So let's talk about the game a little bit. With the jungle path we currently have, we have C skiing starting towards the bottom side, making his way up towards the top side. Quite often, we see again to try and get some resources as well. Um, the worst thing Dalek could do is take too much trading with Segenda now that, you know, Shurnfire is pathing down towards the bottom side. So you want to stay relatively healthy. You don't want to be in dive range once Lee Sin finally starts making his way up there. But with Skeens taking the Crocs, it kind of just speaks to the fact that he want to go for a full clear and potentially looking for level 6 as soon as he can. He could also be going for a, a play, you know, around the level three mark in the mid lane, in the bottom lane, trying to get that early impact. He's obviously probably anticipating the fact that Shurnfire is going for that full clear. We'll have to see where he paths. Obviously, there is the fact that I think Zekor and Twist, you can see from the minimap right now, they're pushing in slightly, so they might be able to time to capitalize, but they are going to get that ward now, so. I would imagine that he's now going to opt in towards that full clear. Yeah, so I think actually with decent trades in the mid lane, doesn't have a pot any longer, and Skeens is around here. It is that level 3 you talked about, but it's already accounted for with the ward. I think crucially for Vitality, they have two pushing lanes. So we see on the top side, Sekenda is pushing in in the mid lane, Diplex is pushing in. But down towards the bottom side, the one lane where Shunfar is pathing to, A are the bot lane that's being pushed in by C for and Twist. And I don't think it's going to amount to too much. We're just going to see a little bit of trading, how the matchup's supposed to go. And in turn, that's probably just going to lead to the fact that they can take top side scuttles. But Skeens with some interesting pathing up towards the top side of the map. Still haven't taken a single camp in his blue side, whereas Shurnfire almost done with his entire jungle. Yeah, he's trading some seconds up here, which I think is definitely not beneficial in terms of what he's actually been able to garner for himself. Obviously, gank in the mid lane. Well spotted out there. Good preparation ward there from Oplon to avoid that. And he's now going to be you know, a considerable amount of time behind uh, Shurnfire. Shurnfire's actually going to dip into the bot side here. He might be able to find something, actually. He's, he's avoided all wards here. Looking like he's going to try and go for that respawn Krog camp when it is available. Going to just get the ward down for now. Might actually look here still. I mean, they have a slow push. You could look to try and burn a few summoner spells, but actually with Twist on the reset timer here, they're not going to be looking for it. And this is a very early roam from Twist as well. You can actually see it on your minimap. Sona making his way up towards the top side of the map. I think they want to look for a duo gank here together. Shurnfire, Twist, potentially teaming up. They already get the intel that Segenda has a ward in the tri bush, but they also know that Skeens is passing towards top side. I this like could this. be the Garlic 200 IQ bait. Dalek's baiting well here. Twist is going to spot Skeens. I think that's going to call the playoff. Actually, he's avoided the vision here. But Dalek's flashed away now. He dodges the Q. It's a good heal from Twist. In goes Shonefire with the go. Skeens going to have to flash away from that initial Q. Undertow again. Does connect. He's still going now. Doesn't have the W available for quite a few more. So oh, he's just about gotten it there. Dodge out from that. Nice little roam from Twist. It means that Dalek has to burn a flash, but so does Skeens. And they get the crash off on the top side as well. I wonder if, how much they can starve Sigenda here as well, because I don't think Yumi and Seri will be able to well, dive. Let's see how they play it. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. In. And Skeens gets taken out for first blood. It's a big heal onto Shonfire. He gets taken out for one more turret here. He is going to trade one for one. I feel like he could have dodged the aggro a little bit more here. Oh, great stuff from Twist. Dodging the aggro there. It's a two for one. And the, the roam here really plays off. Pays off, cool ball. I, I mean, I said it before it happened. If this really works, 200 IQ from Oplon. What a great map read they have. They know Skeens is on the top side. They get early resets coming through. And despite Seacor being pushed in on the bot side, they know he's never going to get ganked. They're against Yumi and Seri. They barely have kill pressure, specifically on the tower. It's never going to happen if you haven't traded. 
So there you have it. Great early game from Opland. They're looking great, Jake. They're I mean, your uh, guys. Your, yeah. Uh, I'm telling you, invest in the Oplon stocks now. We're starting to see more of a proactive, more of an ideal from them. They're able to kind of communicate around the map in a much more like beneficial way for them in, in comparison to what we saw in the first few weeks. The Oplon of week one to four was just a lost lamb. Just, you know, roaming through the wilderness, not having a care in terms of what they were actually trying to achieve. And we're starting to see more actual game plans come up from them. Twist comes out with a roam here. He dodges out from the vision so perfectly there, goes under the turret and then Skeens is forced to commit to the play and they turn it around here, Gulborg. And it's again, it's another early game. We're only six minutes in, but they're coming out with, a, they're coming out with an early advantage. They are. Um... I think they're going to try... Okay, good trading from Zagenda. But they're going to try and keep that advantage going. You can see on the minimap right now. Yeah, there we have Skeev oh. and Jack Trolls. They're going to look for the top side, where I think Opland, they're going to cross map on the bot side instead. Dalek, no Dalek's flash. Dalek's got to give up this wave. He's got to give up this wave. He's walking away now. He might be too late, actually. Assaulted by Shigenda. Skeens is in. Doesn't have that flash available. Going to have to dodge out from a Q. Ignite goes down. He's out. He's done a good job of avoiding this, has Dalek. Obviously, we'll have to sack away, but you'd imagine that there'll be a response on the other side of the map. The timing's just really annoying. He doesn't have the cannon barrage just yet, and that means he can't clear out the weight from afar, so he is going to be starved. But on the other end of the map, Shurnfire will be able to pick up the Drake, and they can try and pressure Jaxkla away from the turret just a little bit, but that story kind of goes the same way we just saw happen it with, with, with Seacall, right? When you have an AD carry and Enchanter pushing you in, rarely will there ever be kill pressure. Yeah, definitely not, at least until that level 6 mark, where you can actually start to get some, that, in the, you know, some of that CC down, some of that lockdown. I think Dalek being shot, uh, starved out of a few waves here, it could spell problems for them. I feel like Dalek has been a pressure point for the uh, for the team so far. And obviously, Shigenda really a shining light for Vitality B. I feel like he can translate releads very well. So that's definitely something we need to keep stock of. But for right now, Oplon have gotten what they want, really. They've gotten a lead through the Dragon. We've obviously gotten that kill on the top side as well, which has acquiesced that lead somewhat as well. And we just, I need to continue to see them get that dragon stacking off. Yeah, but the big question becomes that Herald as well. Where, where is that going to go? Because I think that's a good point of contention. If Vitality B managed to pick up the Rift Hell, well, they can keep the lead going on together. If they get that top turret, you know, all of a sudden he's going to be such a fawn in their side. But the same can be said about Opland, right? If they get that Rift Hell, not only do they stop that, but they can equalize, you know, the gold on towards Shurnfire. Get those gold over to one of the enchanters. Their build paths are extremely cheap, high value for very little money. But that would also mean that you'd kind of just throw the tempo out of the way there and garner yourself some extra resources. Topside skins looking. Oh, skins are going for a ward here. A little bit messy, but it works. It goes straight into the wall there. And I think that's the definition of, yeah, if, if it works, it works, right? It's a bit of a shallow ward hop there. Straight into the wall, no really, no real questions asked, no real questions answered by Dalek there. Gets splattered against the wall and it's another kill for Vitality B. I think this is something that we, we said we needed to keep an eye on in terms of can they continue to snowball it. Shunfire might be a little bit deep here. He's level 7, he's not spotted by the spotted. Vision Cone. Skeens, Ooh, gets no just about spotted here. Skeens has flash though. She might choose to go back in here. Shunfire has popped that ghost, he needs to try and take out Skeens. He might have just about done it, one more key will do it. Surprised to see him not commit further for Skeens here. He's going to walk his way out here. Lots of healing coming out from Peng. They've avoided that. Would have liked to have seen Shunfire maybe try and go for Skeens there. I feel like he could have taken him out. Yeah, maybe he might even be cheeky and just blast going over. No, he's going to go the same way. Just clear your area out with the Vision Cone. No pink wards in inventory, so they don't currently know if there's going to be a ward on top of the objective. But and gone on that Rift Herald, or rather Rift Scottle, for themselves to start off the play. I think it's interesting to just take note of how the mid lane is going as well. Like, I think uh, people... Soraka's quite a deceptive mid matchup in the sense of... You think, oh, it's just going to farm up and like scale or whatever. It's actually somewhat... I mean, we saw in some of the early trades, it's kind of bullying out uh, Diplex on a lot of these trades, actually. Shenfire goes in, takes away that blue and continues to kind of mount dominance. He's around six camps or so ahead of Skeens, about a level and a half up, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah, this I is really good for Offlock. I think Shurnfire at this point, he's just going to give over or give up priority around the Rift Isle a little bit. They can move their support off if they want to go for it now, or they can move him down towards the bottom side and keep that experience rolling from the camp so they respawn faster and faster. But with Twist finally making his way up there, it looks like this, the second objective of the game here, the neutral objective in the Herald, is just going to go over to the way of Upland. And they keep their momentum going. I mean, Upland, they keep surprising us. And, you know, I can't say I'm I'm not pleasantly surprised, by it. It's really nice to see one of our bottom teams just evolve all of a sudden. Yeah, no, there's a real just absolute complete 
genesis of, of, of growth in terms of what they're able to be putting out this game and the last few games. We did see the here that the Zeri and the Yumi were opening through mid and obviously schemes rotated towards the top side, but it's too little too late. It does mean that Shermfire picks up the Rift Herald here. I feel like this is only going to help them exacerbate what is a slight gold lead at the moment. I feel like one of the things we spoke about Gorborg is in terms of these dragon setups, I feel like they're well poised to take a fight around the next dragon and that could be really a focal point for them blowing open this game. Yeah, so looking at teleport timers, Dalek does not have his available, but then again, it's not an unleashed TP either, so Sugena would have to teleport to a tower. With the amount of pressure that they're currently getting on the map right now, it looks like fairly even map state. I think Diplake's going to be pushing in the mid lane, which of course gives him time to move, but crucially, Skeens is not on the map yet, and because he's not, it's so much easier for Opland to just get control around Dave River, and you see it in the control, it is just Opland's to claim right now. So you can see them just walking in here, clearing out all the vision they need to, getting that security around that objective. And it should be very much the case here that, you know, you get that Rift Herald in the mid lane potentially. You might see it here being posted up on this next wave. In the bot lane, Jeskler. It was somewhat aggressive on Zeke. Zeke are probably going to have to flash here. That's to flash away from that Yumi ult. A little bit over aggressive from him there. Obviously didn't have Twist to back him up. That could be, that could be a key point. Diplex actually has to use the ultimate in the mid lane as well, just to avoid the crash. So when you don't have the flash down your AD, neither does Jessler have his ultimate, Jack Troll or Diplex. That to me just means yeah. that they're going to be forfeiting this objective. Or they're going to be looking for steal with skeins. I think that's really the only thing they can do at this point. I think for me, if Vitality B takes a fire, I really think it could be quite dubious in terms of their win condition. Uh, I think really you just want to make sure that you're... And it's crazy to say they need to stop hemorrhaging their disadvantages in this game. And they're up against Oplon and they're really just having to be... They're kind of being curtailed around the map and kind of, you know, offering themselves up to the agency of what Oplon are really providing around the map. And it's constantly Oplon that is setting the tone of this game. And I don't think anyone or any of us would have expected this to be happening, Gorbo. No, and I, I think specifically as well, we talked about it, Vitality B solo laners le rarely leave so room open against the opponent. So when I saw Soraka in the mid lane against Diplex, with, you know, really good possibilities, such so as set up a gang for Skeens. I thought they're going to be dealing with this perfectly, but Opland, they're aware of their weakness as well. And I think that's one of the key things right now. Not only do they know how to get ahead, they also know how they fall behind. And then they accord their game plan with that. We saw the early warding against Skeens come out. We saw the tracking, the movement from Twist off towards the top side. Their reads on the map has been phenomenal. And I think important to note as well is that it's not all doom and gloom for Vitality B. Still very much competitive in this game. It's pretty big uh, gold lead accrued for Shigenda. Obviously off the back of uh, zoning Dalek away. It ran about three waves there. So getting that kill as well pre after that as well. Post that has meant that the lane is very much in his favor at the moment. Um, imagine, you know, if I was to take a guess yet. Yeah, like we're saying, that oh, actually only around 400 gold. I would have expected that to be quite a bit more actually. I think some of it also comes to the fact that Dalek did pick up a kill, but did get some resources. Yeah, the big one is him yeah. being stopped away from a huge wave. Dalek Ooh, again. Oh, he's flashed away. He used the W into the wall. That's going to be the Yumi ult again. And yeah, we spoke about this being a weak, a weak pressure point. See, Shanfire is going to be here to make sure that this turret doesn't go down too low. Here yeah, to crash the wave, stop the wave from, or stop the crash wave rather. But yeah, Dalek having a bit of a rough time in this game. Needs to kind of uh, avoid some of these ganks because. This could be a uh, point in the map that starts to bleed out. Said it a little Oops. bit in the early game, but it's one of those things where you can pretty much just never trade with Tegenda. Because if you just fall below, you know, half HP or something like that, they're going to be looking for you. If you step on in his face, just expect the rest of his team to be there. It's such a vitality playstyle to try and get Tegenda ahead, specifically when, you know, he's not an Orn, but he's on the Gwen. So Dalek, it's a boring playstyle, but unfortunately, it's kind of how you have to play against Tegenda up in this top side. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, with the rest of the map going so well, there's not really any need to sort of go for these sort of trades and find yourself in danger. Obviously, now the, the downside of that is the gold lead has swung back in the favor of Vitality B. And I feel like uh, Jagenda is now poised to be in a position whereby you know, he's going to be able, able to find himself active and online in the side lane. And I feel like that could really be a problem for Oplon because I don't necessarily see themselves having many responses to it. No, and I mean, this is actually one of the few scenarios where we'll allow a Cloud Soul to come through, you know. Having an Olaf to play for to just really bridge the gap you might sometimes have against Champion. Specifically, you know, with the extra movement speed that Jeskin will have or the, what Jack Troll will supply them. Having the extra movement speed to stay on top of your target will actually do a lot if you manage to pick up that soul. 
it's, I think it's very mature of you to settle your differences or, or put your differences aside with Cloud I mean, Dragon I still hate accept. the Drake. Every time I have bot lane prior, this Drake will spawn and I just like, I would r much rather have an Infernal Drake. But here, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, no, it's maturity from you, Gorborg. And I feel Thank like, you. much like Thank Oplon, you. you're showing a lot of maturity in how you've, you know, developed and grown as a person. Um, not to refer to Oplon as a singular person. I think that's uh, dehumanizing, but... Speaking of things that are humanizing this game, I feel like we're really starting to see the human struggle of Oplon come online in a very dramatic fashion for us. It's not long it's no longer a tragedy, it's more of a celebration of how far this team has gone. They're not the they're not the Owen 16 team that we're anticipating from spring. They're very much a team that actually is coming alive and they're giving challenges to some of the best team. And even if they don't even if they start to lose some of these games, I think they can hold their heads high that they're actually Taking it the whole way, you know? They, they deserve to be cheered on I, I, and, and be celebrated. I generally think that as well. Um, yeah. Dalek did a good job of not trading with Sugenda in the top lane. You can see he actually never steps up in lane now. Shenfire tried to see that as a window with Sugenda, who obviously not been very far forward, but it's not going to am amount to too much. What's going to be interesting now is tracking the rotation of our bot laners, as Harold is going to be spawning in a bit. But Peng... Ooh, Peng might be caught here. Has flashed, has flashed away here. It's a lot of big ult. Big healing coming out from Twister. Oh Rucker comes out as well here. Shonfire's big in deep here. Trying to get a little bit of a kill here. Trying to get Shigenda Daleks in as well. Dalek taking a lot of damage from Shigenda. Oplon running out of stopping power here. Running out of heals. And it is going to be Shigenda who finds Daleks. Equals off to the side as well. Going to be using an ult here. Going to be having to use a Gale Force away. Has to flash as well. Oplon. Got so many heals, but it's not enough to bandage aid against the damage onslaught that is Vitality B. They dropped two kills here. And crucially, no healing reduction had been bought either. That was just extended fight on extended fight coming through. But the damage from Sugenda, the AoE that they walked into, they didn't respect he had those needles. And that amounted to a lot of AoE damage that they could not heal. Single target, target healing was there, you can see it. When Pen gets engaged on, super easy for them to just get him back on towards the full HP. Keep Shurnfire going, it's going well at this point. This is where you make the mistake. Dalek gets caught by the never move. Multiple people now getting caught by the needle. The Rom Sugenda. And afterwards, it's just going to be cleaned up from Vitality to be finally finding some footing in this game. Yeah, it's a little bit over-aggressive from Z-Core as well, obviously, here. You see him have to burn that flash. And I bait into more of an extended trade. I feel like if you just hemorrhage the one kill here, it's not too bad. You've obviously burnt some major cooldowns, but I think taking the further kill obviously means I can imagine that Vitality B have gone straight towards this Rift Herald afterwards as well. Going to be getting a little bit of extra damage here. And it means they get, they've got perfect setup for the third Dragon. And this is where, you know, they've not perfected this sense of their game. You know, the, the wheels can fall off sometimes, I feel like, for this Vitality B moving vehicle and you know it's still a learning process for them sorry not the vitality B for Oplon yes it, it is and I think this is where you'll be a little bit worried because even when they fell behind in yesterday's game they had a really good team fight composition well multiple answers as to how to get their leads but a lot of their eggs are laying in a basket called Schoenfire and the Olaf and with how the team fights just went there and now that you're slowly but surely losing a little bit of grasp with the game in terms of you no longer have control of the Drake. You no longer have control of the Herald. You're losing out the fights. They're going to find a way. They're going to have to find a way where they stabilize it and find picks again, which is very limited with their composition. Yeah, I think that's completely fair to say there in terms of how they're going to have to play out these team fights. Still only 2k behind. But like we said previously, Shigenda now 3-1 and one in the side lane, 50 CS up on Dalek, a level up. It's going to be so hard to kind of counteract and... I think even despite the healing, the fact that Jack Troll is on this Yumi will be able to kind of posit himself on top of that mountainous mass that is Shigenda on the Gwen right now. It's just going to be very difficult, it feels, for Oplon to sort of have the damage threshold whereby to take him out of a fight. Yeah, and while they are giving up this objective, speaking of, you know, Shigenda being big on the Gwen, I don't know if you saw his tweet, recently came out with a gym transformation, him, I think for the last six months. Um, finally doing something for his health as well. And my god, what a transformation. Not only that guy Jack from the Rift. He's now also looking great in real life. But obviously we're still in game and he's looking for Dalek. He's looking for Dalek. And Dalek's had to flash away here from the Ignite as well. It just continues to be the case that Dalek is just really receiving the brunt end of a lot of these uh, trades in this game. See on the bot side though, Jeskler alone. Obviously doesn't have his Yumi. Did a good job of trading back some damage onto Shurnfire though. Yeah, just looking to scale here, two items on the uh, Seri at this point in time. Still BT coming through from Seacore, but I think Lord Dominic's regard is really going to be needed against some of the beefier tanky uh, tank. Well, not tanks, but beefier HP champions like the Swain. 
Having LDR in those instances is really going to be what's necessary in terms of cutting them down. You already see the Gore Drinker, you see the plated steel caps. We won't really Ooh. see the damage from Seacore before that third item is completed. I completely agree with you there, and I think obviously the fact that he's opted in for that Gale Force is going to be going for a bit more maneuverability rather than yes. actual frontline DPS. Um, so yeah, like you're saying there, he's going to he's actually going to have to Gale Force straight away from that. Yeah, well, um, not going to have that cooldown available. Could be a little bit dangerous for him actually. There's a small window here before he has his flash. Obviously, with skins as well, with that flash coming up. Keep an eye on that because it's very much the case that you know. And I'm trying to. Remember, I remember that very specific game. I can't remember who it was against, but you remember the game that Oplon played where it's just you know, the sequel moves up into the mid lane just a fraction, and he gets four people coming out of mid bush that just absolutely <laughs> yes, evis and he's just him. taking yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Has been has been known to happen sometimes, but you know I, these these things do happen. I think it's sometimes the individual aspect we, we see in them. We, we have talked about that, of course, in the past. Um, and I think that's also one of the reasons why we're talking on them in a, on an upswing now, because we haven't really seen those moments all too much. We got so familiar with them that now that we've no longer really seen them, we're quite impressed. But I think yeah, for Vitality, no, this is a game where they'll have to bounce back as well. You know, they came on a three-game win streak, lost to Misfits yesterday. I think that was very disappointing in terms of how they played that game and also drafted that game. Dropping a game to Oplon at 0-2 week for Vitality after having a 3-0 win streak, that would really break a lot of that momentum. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Um, obviously, still, you know, quite high up on the standings. I think it's fair to say, still some, of, still one of our top teams. You know, very much in that cemented third position. But you know, with game we're dropping a game yesterday, you'd like to That's think the they're just, one. They're, they're, you'd like to think they're hankering for that second spot. And you know, even. You know, I feel like with the way that the split is played out, a lot of these teams must feel that uh, the LDLC are kind of a little bit out of reach until they get that first loss, until they're actually, you know, it's that thing where you have to be proven that gods can bleed before you can truly think that you can stand a chance against them. So they're definitely looking against Game Ward, for example, and I think a win here. Important for them to get back on form, even if it is against Oplon, who are three and nine, but the fact that they've been taken uh, quite so far, it depends so, how other teams view it, right? How much stock do you take into it? Are Oplon actually a lot stronger than they, they appear? Or um, is it a I sign think, of weakness that you get taken this far? I think it's also teams underestimating their opponent. And I think... I uh, think so as well, yeah. Uh, we've seen it from some of the top end teams. Sometimes they play a little bit. But in this game... And, uh, okay, I think that's very overzealous coming through from Jack Troll. They're not really going to amount to too much for the kill. But they've rotated together around this Skins. map all the time to look, and there comes the kick. That's going to be a flash forward. Yeah, spoke about that earlier. That's going to be the flash kick. Very easy routine job there. It wasn't actually Z-Core that was the victim of that, but just before Dragon, that is going to be in the mid-tier one, and a Dragon goes the way. I feel like Oplon kind of uh, not really playing out the composition the way they've liked, but it's not necessarily that they're, they're just sort of having to be pulled around the map. And this is very much a team for me. You need that three-man core unit of Shurnfire, Peng, and Twist always there. But the problem is that z is now in the side lane, and that means that, you know, any sort of fight that Vitality B, it's very much Vitality B that are having the onus on them to create these situations. And they're continually doing that, and Oplon, not really having too much of an answer, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, I think they, once again, they need to wait for that third item as well if they want to try and win team fights uh, for Seek on the Aphelios. Uh, obviously, a lot of this composition is designed to run forward with the Olaf, but... I mean, an Aphelius with Barrier and, you know, two Enchanters behind him is not too bad either, considering that he's going to have people moving forward to him and you get the availability to kite back. But I think the biggest issue for Oplan right now is again during the side lane. Like, the fact that he should keeps running around the map, picking up tier 2 tier, it's continued to be a fawn in the side, with Dalek not being in position to actually respond back. That's the big issue right now from Upland. Not having anyone to kind of stop Sugenda. And if you have to, then, well, then you have to move multiple members up there and then you know what happens on the other side of the map. Yeah, I think that's the key thing, right? I feel like uh, Olaf would be your person to kind of contest that. He's kind of the only person, but he needs the kind of central tenets that have been built around him in terms of the composition. The Sona and the pay uh, the Sona and Sorak are very much drafted, I feel like, for him, at least until, like you're saying, Zekor gets that 3 item mark. And Zekor is going to take even longer to ramp up here because he's gone for that Bloodthirst to second, which to me is... To me, I think I would, I would describe it as a lower DPS build. It means it's going to take longer for him to ramp up here. So Shonfire really is the, the hairpin that really pulls this piece together. Yeah, I, th I think so as well, so looking for it, they're going to have to look for that moment at, at some point in time as well, because if we're looking ahead of the curve right now, right, Vitality B is still the team who's committing the plays, who's answering, and you don't really have a pick composition on Oplon either, 
Right now, they're just sitting back. They're waiting for the moment. But I wonder what they think that moment is. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like they've been a team that we've, we've criticized in the past for just not taking these moments, you know. I, I remember getting quite angry at Oplon in some of their previous games. You see here, this might oh, be... What's happening, bot lane? Darling just flashed. Yeah, Darling did indeed just flash. I think he's just impressed out there. You can see again, he's used that ult. So I'd imagine that around about that tier 2 mark that he's been forced away from that force to flash. Obviously, that Cannibal Virage has been used as well. So that's not going to be able to be utilized for the cross map. But yeah, Oplon previously a team that we've criticized for, you know... I feel like when you're in a position that they've been in some of the time, as Skeens might fancy his chances here. Jack Trolls popped the ultimate. Looking for the stun on Twist before they go. It's another bit of an overzealous ultimate from Jack Troll. Jack He's Troll uh... is seeing plays I'm currently not seeing. That, that That's for sure. He's aggressive. He wants to get in there. He wants to flip the game. And I think the rest of Vitality B not really looking to do so. They they don't mind just waiting it out and waiting for the right time themselves either. Jack Troll is doing his uh, best impression of the kid from The Sixth Sense because he's just constantly saying to his jungler, I see dead people. And he's well, just... He's, he's trying to at least. Of... He's trying to yeah, be the kid seeing... from The Sixth Sense. He's seeing premonitions of, of people on the enemy team that are dead, but they might actually just be pure up delusions. But certainly don't think it's delusional for Vitality B to push their vision line up in this top side, get a little bit of control around this barren area. With Dalek, obviously, with the teleport, going to be pushing out a few more ways, but he's so scared to move up here. And you can see, he's just moving back towards his team here. Trying to catch out Shigenda, but Shigenda's not going to be caught cool here. Uh, Gwen's going to be Moon. Uh, and while there's no flash, of course, on the Gwen, still so much mobility on that E. Uh, skip and snip coming through from Sugenda. Now with Dalek, no flash. When Sugenda push out that bot side again and he starts pushing it towards the inhibitor turret, it's going to be very difficult for Oplon. They're going to be having a decision. Either you kind of sack Dalek and you try and take the 4v4 on the other side of the map, or you send multiple members towards Sugenda, where you give up the Baron pressure in hopes of trying to get the shot down there currently on Sugenda. I think the move is on Vitality B to make and for Oplon to react on it. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, I think it's very much the case that Oplon on the back foot now. I think it's fair to say it's definitely the way that the, the game's been shaping up. Obviously, a very strong 10 to 15 minutes mark. 15 minute mark, but now very much in a position where we've said it before, Goldborg. They've got to choose their moments very carefully because they don't have the kind of wealth of and breadth of engage that Vitality B might. I mean, Skins can kind of get in with that with those tank stats, obviously, that death stance, get that initial kind of flit in with the flash and look for a play there with the Yumi on him as well. Obviously, Jack Troll. Not priming his engages too well previously, <laughs> but no, you can imagine he'll be able to do it relatively soon. He might be so um, looking for something again. Members are not around, but you know, you never know with him. Or the Drake, 40 seconds. Cloud Soul, not too bad for the composition of Vitality B either. All things considered, of course, with uh, with that trash Drake. Yeah, no, I mean, I, for me, I feel like Vitality... You know, for me, I don't want to sound as if I'm some sort of... Uh, recluse from the Church of Oplon, but definitely a lot of uh, doubt starting to set in. I feel like it's going to be difficult for them to find this sort of team fight. So I feel like Vitality B... Prediction. Production predicted it. Dalek, the Yeah, no, production's picture. really screwed us over there. Oh, actually, Skeens comes in with a flash here onto Dalek. You can imagine what are Oplon going to respond with here. It's been a kill found. They've not really uh, reacted quickly enough in terms of the cross map. You see now, pop, goes popped by Shurnfire. Here comes the Yumi as well. Teleport coming out. Shurnfire, Soraka roll onto him, but he's not able to find Jesper. Jesper just takes out Shurnfire through a Soraka roll. And now through Dalek being taken out in the side lane. Gwen Stefani, because there was no doubt that this team fight would go ter terribly wrong for Oplon if that side lane went wrong. It has done. And now Vitality B going to be on towards the Baron. That is uh, just going to be started up now, and that should be the Baron. You can move Sugenda down towards the Drake as well. Pick up that third Cloud Drake for yourself and start looking for the finishing touches. You don't even have to stay grouped up. I think for Vitality B, the more broad they keep the map, the better for them. Just so they shut down the grouped, uh, the grouped fights coming through from Oplon and keep them in isolation. Yeah, you can imagine the Dalek there in the bot side. He's just looking for the sweet escape against Skeens, but he's not able to quite find it. Gets flashed on. That just translates to across the map, Shigenda's able to teleport in there, turn the fight around and really when you get a fight like that, it's Shurnfire, kind of got, he gets his relatively optimal position, obviously he would have liked to have an Enchantment backing him up with maybe an extra heal, but he's just too far away there. He's onto the Yumi, he's onto Jeskly, he just gets absolutely bursted um, completely immediately, even with a Soraka roll and him, just doesn't have the damage to take out um, Jeskly through, well, without any sort of anti-heal as well, and you feel like the chances are dwindling in these team fights. You know, we spoke about scaling up to these items, but 
Vitality B, you, you almost feel as if they're not going to let that happen here. They've got a pretty iron grip on the game now. There, there, there's no one who's going to cut through the Gwyn. There's no one who's going to cut through the Swain. And you saw it. The Shurnfire couldn't even chase him down. Let's see if they can get Skeeds at least. Shurnfire's ghosted in here, but... Those, that might be footsteps in the dark, unfortunately, as... Uh, they're still looking. Skeeds is going to... Skins is going to be walking out here, but not quite a spot. They spot out Twist. Oh, no. Oh, that Q goes completely wide. Yumi Ult comes out. Going to be stunning up Twist here. Skirn Fire went on to Diplex. Did quite a lot of damage. So Rockot comes out as well. Skeen's going to be ulting away. Does a lot of damage to Twist. Well, turn around here. Jesper's in. W is big. Will it choose to continue go? W's going to separate them a little bit here. Jesper with the ultimate going in quite aggressively here. Trying to find something. Skeen's has the Q primed. Will he take it? His mind's telling him no, but his body is telling him yes. Jesper further forward now. Under the turret. Shigenda. Sort of routed Dalek entirely. You can see Dalek's taking a base far, far away from his homeland. Returns to the base now to try and stop Shigenda. But difficult, difficulty um, poising himself in that position, I think it's uh, fair to say. Yeah, Diplex TPing into the mid lane now as well. They can keep up the siege. Baron and Powered Minion still coming through. Shigenda on the bot side still. Mid lane being pushed in. Diplex forward. Shurnfire taking a lot of damage. The Sorak is taken out. That's your heals that have been taken out there. Yumi is on Diplex, and Diplex is going massive. He's in now. On to Z-Core. No barrier of entry will protect Oplon. The heals were not enough to carry up the band-aid that was required for them to survive the onslaught that was Shigenda in this side lane, and they continue. And there were some good signs, of good vital signs, but they are flatlined at the 31-minute Mark Gullborg, and... Unfortunately, the Miracle Run has been kind of somewhat stopped in its tracks. I think there's still hope for Oplon, but Twist is going to be the final sacrifice in this game. 15-2. to two. It looked hopeful for a little bit, Goldborg, but Vitality B bounced back and they impress. Now up to 9-4 and four in the standings. It was a small but dim light, but quite easily, apparently, Vitality have blown that light off. And they end their week with a 1-1 scoreline.